So there's a new attack in town called Tunnel Vision, or Bug. I don't know if it's a bug or a feature because it was a little confusing when I first looked at it going, this is working as expected. Oh, I guess that's not the greatest way to use this as expected. Essentially, there's a DHCP option that allows you to add routes. Now, that sounds pretty simple. It's been around for a long time. That's why they have the headlines that they do here in May of 2024 about long time bug, but more, no one's really using it this way, or maybe they are, we don't know, but it's more of an attack on full tunnel versus split tunnel VPNs. And that's what I want to do is kind of simplify it. I'll leave links to the research because there's a lot to read. There's a lot in this paper. I think they did a great job doing the research and I'm not going to bother linking to the news articles because, hey, why not go right to the source? But I do want to do a pretty simple explainer so you can understand how this may or may not affect you because you may not really care whether or not your traffic gets decloaked. So let's get started. <music> Now I'm gonna start with a split tunnel VPN setup. This is pretty common where you're on a remote network, you're at some untrusted place and you wanna get back to your office or home network. We have our remote network at 172.16.16.0 slash 24. That is the resources that are on this network and what your computer needs to know to get out to the firewall. So that routing information is here and this allows us to establish a connection over the internet to our firewall at our office network, which has a VPN server set up on there. Now, they obviously are going to know this remote network that you're connecting to this VPN. And with a proper set up VPN with a proper key exchange, all that transaction other than the IP address is going to be fully encrypted. And then from that, we will create this encrypted data channel. We have the outer layer, which is the communication channel, and we have the encrypted layer, the data channel, and we're going to get to the resources at 192.168.55.0/24. What this means is anytime you want to access something, one of these servers over here that are all in this IP range, it will automatically send that out over the encrypted tunnel and any other traffic surfing the web, etc., just goes out through the normal internet. Pretty common VPN setup. Now, full VPN setup, full tunnel VPN setup means not just the resources for this office network, but send everything across the internet. Now, we still technically aren't sending everything because we have to have this outer control channel to talk and make sure our encrypted data channel is working. So the system still needs to know the local network, knows how to get to the firewall. This firewall is gonna be aware that all this traffic's heading over here. It's not gonna be able to see it because of the proper setup VPN and a good key exchange. So all the data is encrypted. And when you have 0.0.0.0/0, that means send all the data over. And there's gonna be an exception. Systems are smart enough to handle this to say, hey, except for the 172 network stuff, yeah, that's gotta go over to this firewall. So pretty simple setup. And that means your IP address looks like it comes from your office or home network. That's why I kind of show the internet coming out here. And when you go to resources on the internet, they go here. When you go to resources that are local, they route here. Pretty simple. And once again, common setup. Where we have tunnel vision fitting in is tunnel vision is adding extra routes via DHCP 121. And we then take in override essentially these routes. So we're not just adding the 172 route, but let's go ahead and add a couple more. I chose 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8 because let's talk about a couple DNS servers. What if they were to take those and add them to your DHCP routes? Well, now those go out over the internet represented here with these red dots that are moving. So now your system has these extra routes that have been added by DHCP and they're not going out over the encrypted data channel. So anything that has added extra routes doesn't route back over your encrypted data channel. Now, this matters obviously a lot if you're using a privacy VPN because you wanted privacy from the remote network that you were on, being able to see what websites you're going to. Now, the websites we use today in 2024, the majority of all of them are encrypted. All your major websites are in many of your minor and just general web surfing sites all use encryption. So the things they are able to see are perhaps DNS queries, or they can see some of the SNI information because that's not always encrypted. So that would be, you know, hey, I know you're going to amazon.com, google.com, facebook.com, etc. And they would be able to do that by taking the blocks of IPs that are assigned to those websites and putting them in those routes that split them out of your tunnel. Now let's talk about mitigations available here in May of 2024. And I say mitigation because this is a feature, not a bug. It's just a buggy way to use this feature. And if you have an Android phone, you're immune. So awesome. That makes it simple for Android users because they chose when they wrote Android not to use option 121. 
But if you're running Mac, Windows, or Linux, how do you solve this? The researchers suggested using a virtual machine that supports NATing, so a non-bridge network adapter. That is an option, for example, that VirtualBox has. That's one way to do it, where you run the VPN on the virtual machine. Uh, that seems kind of tedious. Another way I kind of thought about that would make a lot of sense would be travel routers. And I figure this is a good audience for that, for people that may have these already going. You could take the travel router. You could connect it to this nefarious network, handing out the extra options. The travel router could accept those options, but it's not going to pass them on unless for some reason you told it to, and it would take extra steps. It's not going to pass those on to the devices behind it. They have their own route that they get to the travel router, and the travel router uh, gets those other routes, but it doesn't really matter because those routes won't override the VPN because the VPN is not running on your travel router. If you're doing it right, you'd run the VPN on the devices behind the travel router. Uh, the third option that they suggest that the researchers were using your phone as a hotspot, that's another option, and basically that's saying don't connect to shady networks that you don't trust. Obviously, it's not a big deal for home users. Uh, unless someone else has control over your router as a home user, then you have completely different problems that are beyond the scope of this video. Nonetheless, I love hearing from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to lawrencesystems.com. Check out our swag store and sign up for our newsletter if you want to keep up with some of the goings-ons. Thanks.